Today on MH News, we're showing you how to efficiently log all of your footage. We don't have to chase this dream alone. Welcome everyone to MH News, I'm your host, Matt Haslam. When you're a filmmaker, even an amateur one, you have tons of footage both in audio and video clips. And if you simply import the footage into your computer, soon enough you'll have thousands of clips to sort through in order to find a scene from a certain location. And after a long day of being on location shooting, the last thing you want to do is come back to the office and have hours of looking through your footage to find the best take of a certain scene and marking all that footage. So today, we're sharing some useful tips on how you can make logging your footage and editing a breeze. The first step to efficiently log all of your footage is to mark your script in pre-production to ensure each scene has a different letter assigned to it. For instance, the first scene in a short film might be scene A, the second would be labeled B, and so on. When you run out of letters, simply double them and use AA, then AB, and so on. When you get on location, make sure to bring with you a clapboard. Not only will this help you sync your audio to the video later in editing, but this also offers you a way to mark your footage. Some filmmakers like to skip using a clapboard, because clapboards are too expensive nowadays, seeing that even the cheapest ones on Amazon cost at least $30. But you can easily make a DIY clapboard, like ours, for less than $7. And if you want to know how to make one of these, we have a link in the description below for an episode we did on how to build it. All you are trying to do is label the footage and sync to your audio later, so having a fancy clapboard isn't needed, after all. You're going to edit it out later anyway, so having a fancy clapboard is just wasteful. Have one of the actors or production assistant hold the clapboard in front of your cameras. If you have more than one camera on set shooting a scene, such as a multi-cam production, you want to be sure to aim the clapboard in the direction of each camera recording before reading off the scene and take number and before clapping the clapper to mark your footage for sync. For instance, camera A would be right in front of me, I would aim it there, then if I had a camera B, I would aim it over there. Camera C, if I had it, would be over there. And then I come back to A before I read off the scene and take number, and then before I clap. So make sure you do that. And this is a great clapboard, even though it's only $7. You want to be sure to write on the clapboard which scene you are shooting, such as scene A, and then write the take number <coughs> of that scene, such as take one. So later in logging, you can easily look at the first second of the footage and see scene A and take one, and log the footage accordingly. As soon as you hit record in the camera, the clapboard should already be in front of the camera. This prevents you from having to wait several seconds or even minutes into the footage for the clapboard to appear. This will also save plenty of footage space on your hard drives. If you're only shooting two or three different scenes that day, I find it worthwhile marking my cameras and audio recorders with small clips just to help me later in logging the footage. For instance, if you haven't noticed, most of the episodes in MH News are all one-take shows, and they are normally, there are normally no cuts to different takes. And since we might record four or five episodes in one day, I'll make sure that when I'm done recording one episode, before I move on to recording the next episode, I'll press record on my camera and stop recording very fast, so in the end I have a clip less than a second long in between episodes. I'll do the same on my audio recorder, which in this case is, is the Zoom H4n. And that way, later when I go in to log my footage, I'll be able to look at the file sizes of the footage and notice most of the files are more than 5 gigabytes large, but in between those large files will be a file less than 1 megabyte, so I can easily find out where I switch from one episode to the next. Later on, I can easily delete these files, but it makes it easier in the long run. I know you can just switch out SD cards in your camera, or on the Zoom H4n you can go into the menu and switch the file, but all this takes time on set and it's much more efficient to just take a second to hit record and create a very small file less than a second long on both devices. You want to be sure to also have your production assistant read off the scene and take number so the mics can also pick up which scene and take you are shooting. Episode 11, take 1. Remember, your audio has no visual aspect to it, so you can't see what's written on the clapboard and you need to have some way of signifying which file is which. If you don't have someone read off the scene and take number right as soon as you hit record, you'll have to constantly look through your script and try to listen to the actors to find out for yourself which scene you were listening to. This takes a lot of time during post, especially if you're working on a 90 minute film, 
because you'll have 90 pages of script to look through, and your goal is to be efficient. If you're recording a bunch of different scenes that day, what I like to do in order to help me later in editing is mark which takes are the best. For instance, if we're filming a scene and I thought it was a really great take of that scene, I'll call out to my crew that it was a really good take. Now, if I'm lucky enough to have a production assistant on set that day who's writing down each scene and take number on a clipboard, then sure, he or she can put a little star next to that line, and that tells me later in editing which clips to look at first. But even if I'm the only cameraman on set that day, for instance, for a lower budget project, after the scene is over that I thought was performed really well, before we shoot the next, very next scene or take, I'll put an arrow on the clapboard pointing to the left of the screen, so that on the very next shot we record, that little arrow helps me find out the best, find the best takes. This way when I'm importing the footage, I'll see that little arrow on the clapboard and go back to the previous video clip and mark it accordingly, which we'll talk about more in a couple of seconds on how to do. When I'm importing my footage at the end of the day, rather than just hitting import and then having a bunch of files only marked with the date I imported them into my computer, I'll, find, I'll first create a file for the day. Again, using MH News as an example here, I'll create a file with the date of production followed by the title of the project I was working on. Now, if I worked on multiple projects that day, for instance, if we shot four different episodes of MH News that day, I'll create four master files, each with the date of production and title of the project. But normally, you'll only, you'll only be doing one project per day, so it should be easier for you. After I create these master files, I'll go into each master file and create multiple subfiles one subfile for each scene we shot. So each subfile will be titled with a letter, again using A, B, C, and so on. Once these subfiles are created, I can finally import my footage. In order to do this, I normally sp split my screen on my computer so I can see all the files from my SD card on the left side of my screen and the file explorer from my master file on the right side of my screen. Then I'll click on each of the video clips from on my SD card, and within the first second or so of the video footage, I'll be able to see what scene and take the footage is from. Then I'll rename the file while it's still on my SD card, and that's important here. For instance, SAT1, which would stand for Scene A, Take 1, and drag it over to copy it to the appropriate subfile in my master file for that project. Z using abbreviations will cut down a massive amount of time in post, since you're not having to write out a full word the words scene and take each and every time. If I had multiple cameras, I would abbreviate that as well. So each file would be named something like C2SAT1, which would stand for camera two, scene A, take one. But I could make this easier if my cameras were mounted in, in different ways. For instance, if one camera was on a jib and the other was on a tripod, I would label the file one file J, which would stand for jib, and the other file T, which would stand for tripod. This also helps in editing, so if I'm looking for a moving crane shot, I would only look for the jib shots for that scene because I know all the T shots were shot on tripods and that's not what I'm looking for. If I had multiple SD cards used by my cameras that day, I'll first go through all the video SD cards before moving on to the SD cards for my audio recorder. If I see on the next file an arrow on the clapboard or a star on the clipboard next to the file name, I'll know without having to watch all the footage back in its entirety that this was a good take of that scene. So I'll add the abbreviation on the good take and name it something like C2SAT1-R, which would stand for Camera 2, Scene A, Take 2, Recommended. This highlights and distinguishes this take from other takes of that scene and tells the editors to look at the recommended shots first. Now this doesn't always mean the editors will definitely use this take, but most times they do, and so it really does cut down on the editing time later on. Keep in mind for smaller budget products, the editor will be the same person as the camera oper operator and the one importing all the footage, but labeling the footage with recommendations helps regardless if you're the one who's editing the project, and especially helps if you plan to turn the project over to someone else who will edit it for you. Once all my video footage is, is imported, I'll remove my SD card from the computer and start to do the same thing with the audio. I'll open each file and listen to the first couple seconds of each one, listening for which scene and take the audio footage is from. Then just like with the video footage, I'll first label the file on my SD card and then drag 
to copy the file over to the appropriate subfile on my computer. Labeling and renaming the files on the SD card before copying them to your computer also helps if you forget somehow to reformat your SD card before the next time you shoot. That way you won't have to look through tons of footage the next time you import your footage to find the files from your most recent day of shooting. You can just look for the files not yet renamed and labeled and know right away which files have already been imported into your computer. Once all the files are labeled and copied onto your computer, you'll want to plug in one of your external hard drives and copy the master files you just created on your computer over to your, to your external hard drive. On my external hard drive, I'll have an entire file named Footage Backup, which houses all my footage. That way I can keep all my documents and other files separate from my footage. Inside this Footage Backup file, on your external hard drive, you want to make sure you'll have what I call King Files for each year. So on my external hard drive, I'll have a file named 2015, and then I'll have what I call Bishop Files inside of this King file for each month. And finally, I'll import my master file, which is already labeled with the date of production into this Bishop file. So you'll have a whole file for footage backup, then a King file inside that labeled the year it is, and then inside that a month uh, file for the entire month. Normally, no matter how fast of a computer processor or graphics card you have in your computer, you'll want to keep the files you're currently working on in your computer. For instance, if I'm working on editing Season 2, Episode 11 of MH News, the footage from Episode 11 will be on my computer's hard drive, so I can work on editing anywhere I go. But the footage from all the other products will only be stored on my external hard drives, and not on my computer itself. This helps my computer's processor to allow me to edit in full HD without having to edit in half resolution, and then have to remember to change the settings back to full resolution before exporting to YouTube. This along with a list of other reasons is why it's always recommended to have at least two external hard drives, which each have copies of all of your footage. This way if one is broken or gets corrupted by a virus, you don't lose the footage. It's also best to keep these hard drives in multiple locations, miles apart. To prevent the same problem if your, studio, if your studio accidentally catches fire or something. I know it seems like a lot of work and a lot of files just import a couple video clips and audio sound bites, but when you're editing, it will make for much easier time finding the files you need. For instance, if I need to find a certain file from a certain production, all I need to do is remember when about I shot that piece of footage, and rather than looking through thousands of master files to find one piece of footage I've shot last year, I'll just need to remember what month I shot it in, and then look under that month, which narrows my search down to only a couple hundred master files. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for plenty of great content to come and comment below, or email info at mahaslam.com with your suggestions for topics for upcoming episodes. This is, after all, a two-way street, so tell us what you want to see and ask us any questions you'd like, and we'll try to create the content you enjoy watching. Thanks for joining us, and see us back here every Sunday and Thursday for brand new episodes.